Hello everyone and welcome back. In this session, we will observe the set 2 of ambiguity in CFG's solve problems. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today we will observe another set of solved previous year question on finding ambiguous context free grammars. Consider this question which of the following grammars is or are ambiguous? So, there are three grammars given. A. S can be rewritten as either SS or ASB or BSA or Lambda. B. S can be rewritten as either ASBS or BSAS or Lambda. And C. S can be rewritten as small a capital A capital B. A can be written as small b capital B small b and b can be written as either capital A or lambda where lambda denotes empty string. Basically, instead of epsilon here empty string has been denoted by lambda. And these are the options. Basically, we will have to determine which of these are ambiguous. So, let's try to solve it. Let's begin with a. So, a states S can either be rewritten as SS or ASB or BSA or Lambda. Let's try to derive the empty string that is Lambda. Now, starting from the start symbol, using the first production that is S can be rewritten as SS, we can derive SS. Now, using the last production that is S can be rewritten as Lambda, we can derive Lambda from both the S. So, basically, we are deriving empty string only. No matter how many lambdas we derive, it will be empty string. Then again, starting from the start symbol S, using the last production rule, that is, S can be rewritten as lambda, we can directly derive lambda. So, with the grammar specified by A, we can derive empty string in more than one ways. Clearly, it's ambiguous. Now let's observe B. So B states S can be written as either ASBS or BSAS or Lambda. Let's see what happens if we want to derive the string ABAB. So starting from the start symbol S, using the first production rule, we can derive ASBS. Now, from this S, using the second rule, let's derive BSAS. Now, from all the remaining S, let's derive lambda. So, the yield is ABAB. We aren't gonna consider the lambda as they are only the empty strings. So, yes, we have derived the intended string. Let's see if there's any other way to derive it. Now, since our string begins with A, therefore from these two, we will choose this one at first. So, starting from the start symbol S, the first level of derivation will remain the same as the other one. Now, from these two S, using the same production rule, let's derive ASBS once again from this S. Now, for all these three S, let's derive lambdas. Let's observe the yield now. A, B, A, B, and yes, we again have derived the intended string, that too in a different way. So, certainly, B is also ambiguous. Let's try out C now. So, the rules are, S can be written as small a capital A capital B, then A can be written as small b capital B small b, and B can be written as either capital A or lambda. Let's see what happens when we try to derive the string A followed by four Bs. Now, in case of this grammar, the start symbol is clearly mentioned as S. Well, usually the start symbols are denoted by S only. So, from S, we can derive small a, capital A and capital B. Now, observe the string. We have derived our first A. Now, from capital A, we can only derive small b, capital B, small b. Now, from this b, let's derive a, as because b can be written as a. Now, let's put this a to work. 
So, we will derive small b capital B small b. Since b can be written as lambda, therefore from the remaining b's, let's derive lambdas. Now observe the yield. It's a b, 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 b. Basically, a followed by four b's. So, we have derived the intended string. Let's now observe whether we can derive it again in a different way. Since the start symbol derives only one thing, so the first level of derivation will remain the same. Now from this a, let's derive small b capital B small b. Now from this b only, let's derive a. Then again a will derive small b capital B small b. Now there are two uppercase b's are remaining. Using the production, b can be written as lambda, let's derive lambdas from all these. Let's now observe the yield. It is a, b, b, b and b. So, we again produced a followed by four b's in a different way. Therefore, the grammar stated by c is also ambiguous. Let's now observe the options. One says a and c only are ambiguous. Two says b only. Number 3 considers B and C as ambiguous and 4 says A and B are ambiguous. Now we just have found out that all of them are ambiguous, right? So clearly, none of the options are correct. Interesting, isn't it? So in this session, we observed another set of solved PYQ on finding ambiguous CFGs. Alright people, that will be all for this session. I hope now you all will be able to check whether a given grammar is ambiguous. Do remember there's no hard and fast rule. We have to figure it out using trial and error method. So my recommendation would be try out with the smaller strings first, then increase the length of it. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.